Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Garden Geckos by Tan Robot Games. This is a two to six player board game that plays roughly about 45 minutes or so and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game, Garden Geckos, you are playing as a group of geckos. Choose your quality color between one of the many different colors here and prepare to start placing different locations out. There are six different various locations on each of the tiles that you have that you'll be connecting to other tiles placing down your geckos and attempting to score victory points by achieving the goals, whether it be a bug goal or a location goal. You're also going to have a secret card that's going to give you a unique bonus goal, whether it be by bugs or by locations, and the game will end basically when the last tile has been drawn from the deck, or somebody has achieved six different resources or six different bonus cards here, or if one of the bug piles has been emptied. Calculate your score and see who has the most points, and that is the winner. We'll talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. So here we have a six player set up for the game Garden Geckos. And the way it works is pretty simple. You'll take the two different decks of cards, shuffle them up, and then deal out three objectives each. One is the land set and one is the bug set. Then take out each of the different bug types. There are six. You have grasshoppers, flies, ladybugs, moths, uh, crickets, and worms. Then, of course, you're going to have your geckos. Each player is going to get a set of five geckos of their chosen color, which has a front and a back. You can either play the displayed side or the blank side, and one secret card from the secret bonus deck. Each player is also going to get tiles, three each, and it's going to be from this deck of tiles here that has been shuffled. Take the main tile that has the circle through the middle, the hole in the middle, and place it down. The last player who plays is the person who puts a bug down below into the middle. After that, you've got your three tiles, your geckos, and your secret achievement card. You're ready to begin the game. Playing the game is actually pretty simple. The way it works is you'll have these three tiles in hand, and you can choose one of them and place it down and attach it to one of the previously played tiles. The only rule is that you have to connect at least one side to the tile that you're placing it on. After you do that, you'll take one of your geckos and attach the gecko from the tile you placed to the tile that you connected it to. And just make sure that the tile that you connected it to is the same type. So rock to rock, sand to sand, flower to flower, water to water. After that, you should have a gecko that connects to not only a different land area, but also to two different types of bugs. If you do not like the cards in your hand or the tiles in your hand, you can discard a bug that's in front of you to draw three and choose three from your hand and return the other three to the bottom of the deck. Regardless though, if you don't, just simply after placing a tile and placing your gecko, draw a new card and you should have three, or tile I should say. After you have placed down your gecko and made sure that it connects and connects the two bugs, you'll pass. And the next player will go. They'll take their tiles, they'll look at them, they will place one of them, they will take their gecko and they will connect it to the bugs and to the location that is matching. And draw a tile. And that's it, the game will just continue from there. And the game is gonna end when one person gets six objectives, or when one pile of the bugs is emptied, or if the deck of tiles runs out. And it runs out by being drawn, not by being placed. Now, what is the point of the game? Well, the point of the game is to score victory points. And there's a way you can do that. A, whenever you surround a tile and you're the last person who places the tile, you are going to score for the bug in the middle. And the way that works is you'll check all the geckos that are connected to that tile of the surrounded tile, and you're going to see who has the most. If there's a tie, it will be based on the person who last placed. If it is that person's, they'll win. Otherwise, they'll choose who gets the bug. You'll take a bug from this little pile here and place it in front of you if you score the points. Also, you can score the land and bug cards, but no more than one each. And you can only score them if you place the tile that is actually going to let you score them. You can't just happen to already have the objective. You actually have to place a tile that matches the objective you want to score. Say that you want four different desert tiles and you have them already, no good. Place another tile that has a desert and connect it and then take the card. Each of the different landmass cards require you to have geckos on the different landmasses. First and foremost is if they have four different land, four of the same land type, like deserts here, you can take it as soon as you place your fourth one. Some of them may have more complex op options, like having one of each type, or three of one type and two of another. But regardless, the amount of bugs on the bottom of the card is your victory points. Four bugs, four victory points. The opposite is true for the bugs, but instead of them working like the placement of your geckos, how it works is the connection of your geckos. Say you need to get this card here, and it's going to say fly connected to ladybug and moth connected to cricket. 
And you have to have a gecko that connects this one and the other one. For each connection, you have to have a gecko that connects those two bugs together. So this requires two geckos connecting these two specific type of bugs. Take this card and score three victory points, three bugs. Whenever you empty out one of these objectives, you'll place another one out so that other players will have an opportunity to take one, and you can never take more than one of each with the tile that you provide by placing it down with your gecko. At the end of the game, you're also going to score victory points based on your secret objective card. Some of them might be based on the largest landmass that you have geckos connected to, um, and in which case you will get bonus points that way. Or it might be a bug card. A bug card is going to give you victory points if you have bugs on the bottom of your objective cards. Remember you have these different bugs that score points, four bugs, four victory points. This is specifically for the cockroach. You have one cockroach here, that'll give you a bonus point. And if you have multiple cockroaches on multiple objectives, you'll score even more bonus points. And that's the way you do it. Score for your objective, score for your other objective set, and score for your bugs and the bonus bug that you will get, or bonus point card that you will get based on land masses or bugs. And whoever has the most points in garden geckos is the winner. Tile placement game at its finest, connecting two different types of things while making a beautiful garden for your geckos. So Garden Geckos is a vibrant, beautiful game all about connecting geckos to location land masses of the same type and to bugs that create connections based on the objectives that you need. You're going to be doing three different things that are important in this game. The first thing that's really important is as people surround tiles, having the most geckos to take the bug from the supply when you score it. If you're able to do that, you'll get points for each of the bugs. And sometimes you'll have a secret victory card that will give you bonuses for those specific type of bugs as well. If you don't, just worry about getting as many victory points as you can from basically surrounding areas that have your geckos. Now, of course, that's kind of a light way of scoring. What's more important is making sure that you get the card objectives because the landmass ones can give you anywhere between like two and five points, whereas the bug ones can do the same thing. Whereas just getting a bug will score you only one and it's only used for the main bonus objective at the end of the game, as well as a little bit of points here and there. And so you have to think about making combinations based on the bugs that you need to connect and the landmasses that you need to have control over. And so as you start placing these guys down, you'll be thinking about one objective and another one and trying to attach them, while other players are doing the same thing. Uh, also do note though that you only have five geckos, which means what happens after you place all five geckos? Well, when you place your fifth one, the next time you place a gecko or would place a gecko, you have to take one away from the field and place it somewhere else. So keeping in aware of where you have placed and what objectives you want to get, along with what geckos you no longer need. Maybe a tile has been completely surrounded and you finish an objective for one of the geckos you have, take that off as opposed to one that's on the edge of the board that might score you bonus points for various reasons in the game. This is a light, family-friendly, tile placement game that's all about focusing on two different directives and having some bonuses therein. It's got beautiful different bugs, a variety of different colors and flavor, as well as of course the different types of geckos that have a unique and nice little touch of having a kind of textured side and a blank side that you can kind of choose and utilize along the way. It's a simple, straightforward type of a game that, you know, it has a little bit of more complexity as you start worrying about the different aspects of the game, so you can kind of play as hard and fast as you want, or as loose and tight as you want. It's really up to you as to how you want to connect the different tiles and focus on certain objectives. Go too far out of bounds, try and get too many things, and other players will take them away from you, and maybe focus on one or two little objectives as you progress throughout the game. Always note, though, that these will be changing, and it's very likely, especially in a larger player game, that you may not get the objective that you're looking for, so keeping your eye on something else is not a really hurtful thing to do. It's a fun, family-friendly, light tile placement game. I, I enjoyed this game. This is a very easy game to understand, it's a very easy game to teach, and it's something that you can jump into and out of with a large group of players. I mean, I didn't actually expect six different players to play this type of a game. Usually tile placement games focus on like four players, and in this case it works pretty well with larger numbers of players. However, you might not get the objectives you want, and it might be a little more confusing or like difficult to kind of manage your expectations for the future if every time you go around the board, the objective you want and you're close to getting has been snagged from you. And that can happen with a larger player game. It's obviously tighter and probably a little bit more fun, I would say, in the maybe two to four player range, but it does work in the larger player area, especially if you can kind of control the table and make sure that you score specific objectives while forcing your opponents to try and get other ones that you do not need. I do also like the kind of bonuses that are provided. There's a land type of a bonus, which is all about trying to create the largest landmass of a certain type 
and scoring bonuses there. Or there's the bug bonus, which is a way in which you can score extra victory points, but not only the cards that have are, are on the on the field that kind of just count as victory points for other players, but also can be bonuses for you in addition to the bonuses around uh, the different tiles in play that will score you additional points in that way. High quality tiles, high quality different pieces of wood and meeples, which I love and they're beautiful and they're like, they're, you could tell that some of them are kind of, have kind of this like, I don't know if it's like a kind of like a sticker with an etching to it, but they look really, really nice. This is a cool little game. I know what to expect from this one. It was kind of a little family friendly light game. I think you'll like this game if you're looking for something that's kind of like Carcassonne with a little bit of different type of area control that involves objective cards as opposed to objectives that are written on the field. And it also is one of those games that's light and family friendly. If you're looking for a little more of an in-depth type of tile placement game, this is probably not going to be for you. If you don't like the kind of kitty artwork, then maybe not so much. But the good news is there's um, the artwork is, is kind of limited to the box. This is the field kind of gives you that more vivid feel of creating your own landmass and whatnot. So whereas I wasn't the biggest fan of like the box and that kind of stuff, the way the game looks on the table is really pretty and really unique and something that I can come back to and play with a younger audience as well as an older audience as well. It kind of mixes as well with pretty much everybody. Overall, it's a solid experience. I had a ton of fun with this game, and I think it has kind of a nice replay value as well because every time you place that a board, it's always gonna be different, and the objectives are always gonna push you in unique ways and challenges based on the tiles that you have in hand. As long as you don't mind a little bit more of a chaotic experience when it comes to five and six players, I think Garden Gecko is gonna be a pretty solid game for you to take a look and experience. Either way, I'll have the objective too in the bottom in the description. Thank you guys for watching our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Garden Geckos. If you're interested in picking this up, there will be a link down below where you can go ahead and pick it up on crowdfunding. And as well as our live streams every Sunday, but not this Sunday, at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one here. And in fact, this game would make for a great live stream. You can also watch us on Whatnot on Wednesdays, and you can check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, where we have more blog posts, reviews, giveaways, and Kickstarter lists. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to playing some garden geckos with you next time.